you different from a goldfish? Uh, let's be brutal, the goldfish doesn't have a great personality, does it? It doesn't have a great character. And I've said many times, if your kids had a goldfish and it died, you could go while they were at school and buy another goldfish and they'd come home and wouldn't know any difference. Whereas you couldn't do that with cats or dogs and you certainly couldn't do it, even though they might wish you to, uh, with their brothers or sisters. And that's because, <laughs> as, because um, as we evolve, as we become more sophisticated... It's not to say that genes aren't important, of course they are, but they're much more important for the goldfish because that's why they have a limited repertoire. They have the tyranny of a very fixed stereotype repertoire of behaviour, unlike us, who, of course, have much greater latitude for all the opportunities and behaviours that we have. So it's this that differentiates us, this ability to interact with the environment and have individual experiences. And guess what? If you have individual experiences, you're going to become unlike the goldfish, an individual. And this is why we occupy more ecological niches than any other species on the planet. We don't run particularly fast. We don't see particularly well. We're not particularly strong compared to many animals. But gosh, what we are superlative at is learning at adapting. So my first message to you is your experiences are going to determine very much your view of the world, if you like, your mind. How does this happen? Well, when you're born, you're born pretty much with all the brain cells um, that you need at the time, but it is the growth of the connections between the brain cells that accounts for the growth of the brain after birth. And it's astonishing, even in the first two years of life, you can see this changing of connections. And now, why that's exciting is these connections will be unique to you, even compared to your twin. They will have a unique configuration that's endlessly changing as you have your unique experiences. And this is something called plasticity. It doesn't mean to say... The brain is plastic, of course. It comes from the original meaning of the word plasticos to be moulded. Uh, let me give you two very brief examples of the astonishing plasticity of your brain, which accounts for why you are so individual. Um, one is very famous of London taxi drivers. You may have heard of this. Certainly the London taxi drivers have heard of this study. If you <laughs> talk to them. And it involves the fact that, uh, as you know, they have to learn all the streets of London and they have to be able to recite to an examiner in an oral exam without recourse to a manual, um, all the one-way streets of London, how you'd get from A to B, respecting all those prohibitions. Now, to do that, they have a huge burden on what's called their working memory. And interestingly enough, in brain scans, one of the areas in the brain related to memory, it's an area called the hippocampus, is astonishingly, in scans, larger in London taxi drivers than in people of the same age. And it's not that having a big hippocampus predisposes you to being a London taxi driver. Um, because, well, you have to think of these things, eh? because the difference is more marked for the longer they've been driving. Now, perhaps not many people here are planning any day soon to become London taxi drivers, but perhaps many of you play the piano or have kids that play the piano. And this is an even more exciting experiment that I would like to challenge a philosopher with. Um, it involves three groups of adult human volunteers. None at the beginning of the experiment had experience of playing the piano. And the first group, um, if you get chance to volunteer for an experiment like this. Uh, try and not be in the control group because they just stared at a piano for five days. And... <laughs> so, as always, the poor old controls miss out. You know? So anyway, so they were staring at the piano. Um, then there was a second group who learned five-finger piano exercises. And even in five days, forget about two years of training to be a cabbie, um, even within five days you could see an astonishing change in the brain territory relating to the digits as the people were learning this specific activity as they were rehearsing it. But the most exciting group that I would love to talk to philosophers about is the third group merely were asked to imagine they were playing the piano. And their brain scans were pretty much the same as those that had physically learned these new exercises. So I think there's lots of things that we can talk about on that, not that we have time. I'm just going to summarize. The first is you can't really distinguish between mental and physical, as though you know, feelings and thoughts were in some kind of ether out there. And... Uh, you know, people like me deal with the squalor of the chemistry of the brain, and the two are completely unrelated. Obviously, that's not the case. The other important thing was, that as far as the brain was concerned, the exciting and interesting part was not so much the contraction of the muscle, it was the thought that had preceded it. The mind is the personalization of the brain through the dynamic configurations of connections triggered in turn by your unique experiences. And it starts off as a one-way street, how sweet, how fast, how cold, how bright. But slowly as those connections form, it turns into a two-way dialogue. Every experience you are having will upgrade and update your connections. And every experience you're having will be judged and evaluated through the existing connections. So you're in this lovely dialogue 
with the outside world. And this gives you a narrative. It gives you a life story. Again, this linearity of a beginning, a middle, and hopefully in the dim future, the final end. Yeah? And everyone has their unique trajectory. And it's this that gives you the identity, I think, that we all so treasure, that makes you so special. And it's all due to the connections in your brain.